Hey yo, what up? It's me, Relic781, just kicking it, drinking some beers. How y'all doing tonight? So I got some new contacts, check that shit out. It's just fucking ill. Anyways, let's get into this fucking Q&A. First things first, cheers. Having a beer. Gotta drink that Paps, you know what I mean? I fucking love that shit. Okay, let's see. Let's get into this shit. Okay. First question. When did you start getting into rap music? I started getting into rap music when I was about 13 or 14. Um, the very first record that I got was from the Fugees. My second one was Snoop Dogg. Fucking Doggy Style. And then I got the Bone Thugs and Harmony East 99 album. So when I heard all those and shit, I used to be like in a rock band and I used to sing for them. But they, like, you know how it is with a fucking rock band. You can never fucking stick together. So we all split up, and I still wanted to make music, but they didn't. So, yeah, I fucking got a computer, and I started recording on those fucking little computer mics and shit. And I was still beats off of, like, singles and, like, fucking off of LimeWire at the time. <laughs> or, like, Napster. And I was still like the beats and shit, and I would make like little, I guess like little mixtapes, whatever. So yeah, man, that was, that's when I got into it. Um, but I've been into music since I was young, like eight or fucking like nine years old or something like that. I've like always played fucking music or like instruments or whatever. Okay, next album. Next, next question, sorry. <laughs> A little fucking buzz right now. Okay, let me open up this, fucking open this shit up, alright, are you going to repress any of your old albums, yes, I am actually going to be repressing, let them out, boot to the face for the killer crew, um, I am also going to be doing Stay Away From The Light, and all these are going to have, like, alternate covers and maybe, like, one or two fucking, like, special tracks on it or something, or, like, extra old shit or something on them. So, yeah, uh, fucking artwork will be different, everything will be fucking way different. Alright, next question. Shit, man, I got so many fucking questions, I don't even know where to start. But a lot of them are, like, the same fucking questions and shit. For the album, forgive me. Why did you only have one collab track on it? Um, I only had one collab track because... And this is something that a lot of fucking people don't know, is that... Four of the tracks off of that album are actually on... Heartless. I'm not going to tell you which ones they are, but yeah. Um, so fucking four of those are actually going to be on the album. And uh, I guess it was kind of like a prequel to the Heartless album. So yeah. Um, yeah. Let's fucking see what the next shit is. Alright. Can you tell us anything about Heartless? <laughs> All right, so fucking heartless. Uh, there's gonna be like a lot of fucking tracks about my life. There's gonna be a few fucking horrorcore tracks. There's gonna be a few fucking story tracks, um, and that's about it. I mean, um, there might be like a diss track or two, just about people that have fucking claimed my shit, which is fucked up, especially when I was gone and they're claiming it for themselves, and that's. That's pretty shitty, but y'all will have to hear that shit when it comes out. Alright, next question. What is Frost on My Pillow about? Frost on My Pillow is about a girl that I meet in my dreams. And when I go to sleep, I actually pull her out of my dreams. And she's a ghost. It's about... Elizabeth Battery. 
so when I pull her out, she sleeps next to me, and when I wake up, all I want to do is, like, pretty much be with her, but she leaves a frost on my pillow. And if you ever, like, been around a ghost, or if you ever, like, felt a fucking presence of a ghost, you know that it's ice cold. So, yeah. And it's actually a fucking prequel to uh, Her Ghost in the Fog. Which is on my Stay Away From The Light album. So yeah. That's what that song's about. Next question. On Down The Road, did you and your brother actually sell cocaine? <laughs> yeah, for real, man. Me and my brother actually fucking sold that shit. Uh, we actually live with my homie fucking Modern Day Cholo. I'm not gonna give you his fucking real name, but uh, that was the plug. And... Yeah, man, we actually fucking sold that shit for about two years. I was fresh out of rehab, and uh, I needed a way to make money. And, yeah, my fucking brother, he fucking did that shit, and I used to bag it up, and we used to sell it. Uh, he'd go to his 9-to-5, and I'd stay at his house all day, and I'd just be serving all fucking day long. And uh, when Buckshot came back f from fucking Texas, he started helping me, and we got our studio back, and then that's when, like, the boots to the face and all that shit like actually started to fucking come out so yeah we actually did sell cocaine pretty much everything in that fucking song is actually real life so yeah that's about that one let's see what's the next questions how do you feel about people claiming that they are the pioneers of gothic rap <laughs> man Y'all motherfuckers, dude. Alright. <clears throat> this gothic rap shit is my shit. I started it. When I first came in the fucking game, nobody fucking claimed that shit. Nobody wore the fucking eyeliner, and nobody painted their nails, and nobody fucking did that shit, man. Because it was frowned upon in the rap game. Well, when I came into the rap game, I fucking did it, and I stayed strong with it, even though... Like, fucking other artists would pick on me, and they'd fucking, like, they want to fucking fight me and shit for it, just because I fucking, like, look this way and shit. And, uh, so when I went to rehab, and I quit for those fucking, like, few years or whatever, when I came back, there was a whole bunch of artists fucking wearing that shit. And they were pretty much claiming that shit. And, no, I fucking started that shit. You gotta check your archives, and you gotta do your fucking history. And you will know that my ass was the first one to do it. All these other artists fucking painted their faces. And they fucking wear masks and shit. And I wanted to be different. So I started this fucking gothic rap movement. And at the time, like, it wasn't called that. But that's what it is now. And I pioneered it. And I don't mind people fucking doing it. Like, I really don't mind it. But you just gotta know, like, your history, man. And you gotta check your roots. Like, if you wanna be... In this horrorcore game, you gotta know where you're getting your shit from. And, yeah, that's all I'm gonna say on that. Wait till you're heartless and I got some other shit to say. Next question. Are you and Comatose cool? Yes, man. He's my boy. Um, so is Mr. Bloody Bloodshot. What's up? Um... Me and Comatose, man, I saw him at the Gorefest, uh, 2014, and we actually chopped that shit up, and, uh, pretty much it was people fucking instigating our shit, and it was fucked up, and, uh, it was people in his ear, and it was people in my ear, and they were just trying to make something out of nothing, which is fucking stupid, you know what I mean, like, I listened to him since before I started fucking rapping and all that shit, so, yeah, man, he's my boy, we're fucking cool and shit, we're actually got a collab in the works, and yeah, man, what's up, Coma? So, yeah, and, uh, there's actually another rapper named The Pumpkin King, and he thought that I fucking hated him for some reason, I have no idea, like, if people were in his ear or whatever, but I hit him up one day and I was just like, yo, what's good, man, like, it's good on the music video and all that shit, and he was like, damn, man, like, I thought you hated me. I was like, nah, man, like, I got nothing but love, you know what I mean? 
Like, that whole Pumpkin King shit, man, it's just... It was a gimmick to fucking... Well, like, not like a gimmick, but that's what I... I wanted to do fucking Halloween shit, and I wanted to be, like, a Halloween rapper. So, what's better than the Pumpkin King? So I claimed that shit. And at the time, I had never heard, like, fucking anybody drop that in a fucking verse or anything. So, yeah. That's that. <clears throat> Alright. Fuck, man, I knew this question was gonna get brought up. Um, why did you leave? Whoops. I fucking exited out of it. One second. I'm trying to find this fucking question. It just fucking disappeared. What the fuck? Fuck, man. <clears throat> I'm trying to find the question. Hold on. <laughs> what made me want to get into the rap game? Um, I just like the way that they fucking, like, flip the words around and stuff like that. And, like, the beats had a big influence on me. And that shit was fucking hard, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm from the South. Or, like, the Southwest. So I listened to a lot of fucking South music. Like, fucking, um, UGK. And, like, Paul Wall. And, like, uh, Slim Thug. And, like, shit like that. And, like, 3-6. And, yeah, man. So it just got me into that shit, like, really heavy. Um. I'm trying to find this other fucking question, man. I don't know where it went. I think it's right here. Okay, yeah. This is a question that I knew was going to get asked. And it did get asked about fucking 20 times. What made you want to drop off SKR back in the day? Yo, what up, Tyler? Alright, so... I was the first artist on fucking SKR. And I was promised an album, and it didn't come out. And I just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And... And the words of King Koopa, and if you don't know who that is, that's fucking Chameleon Air. He says that some people want to be bosses and some people want to be a fucking artist. Well, me, I'm a fucking boss. I don't like people telling me how to do stuff. I don't like them to fucking tell me how to do it, um, what to do, whatever, you know what I mean? I'm a boss, I like to do my shit. And I was trying to learn, like, fucking production, and I couldn't do it. And, uh, I wanted to release my album, and I couldn't do it, and people get, like, they kept getting pushed in front of me, and it just fucking, I was just done with it, man. So, like, after six or, yeah, like, six years, I just kind of was just like, yo, man, like, I want to do my own thing, but I still want you to fucking produce my albums, and I still want to record with you guys, and I still want to be homies and all that, but it just didn't happen that way. And, like, ten years later, here we are, and... We're still not fucking mended, so, I mean, that's what happens, you know what I mean? Especially, like, if you go into business with friends. Like, that shit happens, so. Yeah, that's that. Do you have promo that you can send to the fans, or are you going to start a street team? I've actually started, or, uh, I've actually, like, thought about that shit. And I want to start a street team and shit, but uh, I'm just trying to get all my ducks in a row right now. Like saving up money, getting the album press, getting fucking promo press, getting fucking merchandise press, and I'm going to release it all at once, and I just want to do it like big like that or whatever. But yeah, uh, so far I got fucking posters. I was actually going to show you guys. That's the Heartless posters. Sorry, the glare, if you can see them. It's the fucking album cover. And I got like a hundred of those. I got stickers, if you can see that, Relic 7A1 fucking heartless stickers, and that's made by my, and that's made by my homie Jermaine, shout out Jermaine, what's up man, much love, and shout out to all my homies back in the 505 and all my homies in the 303 and around the whole fucking US man, cheers. Speaking of the 303, 
my fucking boys from BBS. Fucking Iggy and fucking Grudge. What's up, man? Much love, man. They're going to be at the gathering. Make sure you guys fucking peep their sets and shit. Much love to everybody on the fucking dead media shit, man. That fucking BBK and everybody, you know what I mean? Much love. Thanks for sticking by me, all y'all. So, yeah. I'm going to end it at that. And, uh, yeah, man. Stay stay on the lookout for fucking Heartless. And, yeah, man. There's much to come, man. Like music videos and fucking promo and, like, merchandise and all that shit, man. So, fucking keep a lookout and fucking stay sick, y'all. Much love.